In the summer of 2016, Kevin Durant had a decision to make and he chose to go to the Golden State Warriors in free agency. And ever since then, his career and legacy have taken such a steep turn that he has easily become one of the more polarizing athletes of the modern era. Because here we are in 2020 and people are still having debates about how great Kevin Durant is and what is his legacy towards the game of basketball. Some people have him in their top 15, some people don't even have him in their top 25. But I'm here to clear the air about what is the legacy of Kevin Durant and what will happen to his legacy if he can win a championship in Brooklyn. But before I go any further with this video, I would like to thank every single one of y'all because I had just hit 45,000 subscribers not too long ago and it is because of each and every one of you that I am where I am today on this channel and no matter what I will continue to grind because of the support that you guys give me day in and day out. Another thing that I would like to shout out before we get started with this video though is my Twitter. If you are not following me on Twitter, make sure you do that after watching this video. Just hit over a thousand followers. And honestly, I just want to be able to connect with you guys on another platform to show you guys, you know, the little more personal side of me and more of my basketball takes. But without further ado, guys, let's get on with this video. Kevin Durant is easily one of the greatest scorers that the game of basketball has and will ever see. And when you look at the game today, seeing players like Brandon Ingram, Giannis Antetokounmpo, or even Christos Porzingis, I think their games are really influenced based off of Kevin Durant's impact in the NBA. Not necessarily that he influenced their game, but he really opened up the NBA to the philosophy that a seven foot player can do what point guards and wings can do on a day to day basis, night in and night out. Because coming into Kevin Durant's rookie season and then in the years to follow, we didn't really look at seven footers as guys that should be handling the ball on a night in and night out basis. But Kevin Durant really opened up our minds to that, and now we got a guy like Giannis who would be playing center 10 to 15 years ago, running the point guard sometimes and bringing the ball down the court. Ben Simmons can do what he does in Philadelphia. You got seven footers like Christoph Porzingis and Joel Embiid taking defenders off the dribble. And I think a lot of that credit should go to Kevin Durant. But getting back to Kevin Durant's legacy in particular, there are multiple ways to look at KD. For starters, when Kevin Durant was in Oklahoma City, Let's just call a spade a spade. Though injuries may have derailed a lot of potential postseason successes that that team could have saw, but along with Kevin Durant's failure to show up or at least play to his capabilities in a lot of big games and moments, such as 2011 in the Western Conference Finals against the Dallas Mavericks. Or you can look at 2016 against the Golden State Warriors, especially in games five and six, when they were up three games to one and poor shooting performances were the reason why the Oklahoma City Thunder were not able to close out the deal. And honestly, when I look at a lot of those moments, it isn't just on Kevin Durant. Russell Westbrook was right there with him, and he also has his own blames and faults. So it's not like Kevin Durant deserves all of the blame for the failures of the Oklahoma City Thunder. But that doesn't mean he should be completely absolved. If you're gonna blame Russell Westbrook for things that happened, then you need to be fair towards Kevin Durant. And you can't just all of a sudden ignore all of his past failures and what he was before because he eventually won two championships with the team that beat him in the previous year. And not only did they beat him, he was up three games to one and choked the series away that cost them from going to the NBA Finals that they had not reached since 2012, which was their only Finals appearance. And it's not like the absence of talent is a big issue here, because Kevin Durant was drafted to the Seattle Supersonics who built a really solid team and core around him. He had Russell Westbrook, who was a top 10 and in some years a top five player in the NBA and a top 10 player at the point guard position. He had a six man of the year winner in James Harden before he broke out in Houston. And even though he wasn't playing at an MVP level, he was still contributing in a major way 
towards the success of a team that eventually saw a finals berth at the end of the 2012 season. You can't also forget Serge Ibaka who was one of the better rim protectors in the NBA as he led the league in blocks in back to back seasons of 2012 and 2013 and was a multiple time all NBA defender making the first team in three consecutive years from 2012 to 2014. And even though offensively he wasn't some juggernaut he still improved on that side of the ball by not only growing a shot that was effective in the mid-range area very well, but even extended to the three-point line as he became one of the better jump shooters at the big man position. Combine that with other great role players such as Thabo Cephalosha, Steven Adams, Kevin Martin, and even Reggie Jackson, I think it's safe to say that the talent that Kevin Durant played with in Oklahoma City was good enough for a player of his caliber to be able to get the job done and not only have more than one finals appearance, but even a championship. So for people to just give him the edge when it comes to how great he is as a player, because of the fact that he has two championships and two finals MVPs, and was the best player on that Golden State Warriors dynasty, I think that is completely absurd. That team literally won 73 games without him. I don't know why this is rocket science to some people, but when you add an MVP caliber player to substitute Harrison Barnes of all people, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? You could have put a lot of guys on that team and I think that you would have gotten the exact same result. It is ridiculous that people are giving him so much credit when I just remember years ago these exact same people were saying his rings don't mean anything. But now that we're already on that subject of discussion, let's just use that to transition to the other talking point that people have about his legacy. The flip side, Kevin Durant's legacy doesn't mean shit. Kevin Durant has asterisks on his championships. What worth is on those titles? Well guys, there is definitely some truth to the asterisk talk, but I will never ever take credit away from somebody when they win a championship, especially when they contribute in the ways that Kevin Durant did to the Golden State Warriors in 2017 and 18 by being the best player in both of the series. You could question 2018, but I think for sure 2017, he was the best player on that court throughout the entirety of the finals. And when you see the performances that he did, with the efficiency and grace that he showed on that court, there should not be a single question in anybody's mind on if he deserves those championships. He deserves it because he followed the rules, waited till free agency and joined the team that he wanted to go to. It was well within his right and you should not be taking away from his accomplishments because you don't like how he got there. At the end of the day, he got there and that will never change. But despite all of what I just said, that does not mean that we can finally raise Kevin Durant to a level that he is not on. Two things can be true at the same time. Yes, Kevin Durant's rings do matter to his legacy and the performances are something that we can't take away and he's the champion, no ifs, ands, or buts, but that doesn't mean we can't analyze it in its proper context. The reason that rings from Dirk Nowitzki in 2011 or Dwayne Wade in 2006 are held in such high regard that elevated them to the levels that they are in all time greatness is because of the fact that they were able to overcome obstacles that stacked the deck against them to win a championship in the first place. Kevin Durant has never done that. It's been quite the opposite for him during his time in Golden State. It's actually been quite the opposite since he captured back-to-back -back finals MVPs in 2017 and 2018. It just doesn't work that way because at the end of the day, context matters. And in the case of Kevin Durant, that is something that critically matters for his legacy. Because if we're being honest, as great as he is, those Golden State Warriors teams were already championship contenders before he got there, even winning one in 2015. And the defensive attention that all of those players get make it much more easier for Kevin Durant in comparison to not only some on his team, but others around the NBA. LeBron James at that time had the responsibility to carry the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kawhi Leonard at that time had the responsibility to carry the San Antonio Spurs. 
Kevin Durant was benefiting from Steph Curry being doubled at half court because teams would rather deal with Kevin Durant than Steph Curry. It was much easier for him to do what he does, so that's why he was so efficient. Now, Kevin Durant's efficient regardless, but the level of efficiency that he was on in the 2017 NBA Finals, let's be honest, that shit was absurd, and a lot of that is due to the defensive attention that Steph Curry gets. And if you watch a lot of those plays in Golden State Warriors games, which I'm sure all of us have, I think all of you guys can agree with me that that is not hyperbole whatsoever. Kevin Durant's a great player, but going to Golden State only proved that he could be a great player on the best team in the NBA that beat him before he even joined them. So what does it really prove? We already knew he was a great player and him going to Golden State did more for that organization than it will ever do for the career of Kevin Durant. But now that we have addressed both sides, let me leave you guys with this question that I want you guys to answer in the comment section. Where will you rank Kevin Durant if he gets a championship in Brooklyn? Will he be in your top 10? If not top 5? Or hell, maybe he'll only get into the top 15. And if he doesn't win a championship in Brooklyn, will it hurt his legacy? Or will it not damage it whatsoever? Because if the arguments against him or the fact that he has such a stacked deck that of course he was going to win, how will it affect his legacy when the deck is not so stacked in his favor and he just can't get the job done? Will it negatively affect it to the point that it will lower it a bit, or will it just stay the same and not be affected whatsoever? But it's up to you guys, I would love to know what you guys think about it, so let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. Do not forget to drop a like on this video so I can keep making fire content just like this. Hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified after each and every single video that I post. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. All my social media links are in the description box. Y'all have a great day. I am out. Peace.